What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. And here we have Dr. Oh. Arnold Ebicady. Yeah. Who has an honorary degree from Penn State, I'm making most of this up, in <laughs> rushing the passer, at least according to his Twitter profile. Yeah. And we're going to start right there with this hard-hitting question, <laughs> AK. Uh, Arthur Smith likes to give people some... Some grief. Some grief yeah. about things, including your nickname, the yep. doctor of pass rushing. Does he still give you grief for that? He does. Even <laughs> all these months in. He said, it does, and I can't be mad at it because he said, so I get 10 sacks, I'll be called a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> a nurse! <laughs> okay, origin story time. Uh, how did that nickname come to pass? So, well, the name doctor, it, it, was, it was funny the way it came about, and I remember I was talking to a friend who was like, uh, what's it called? Uh, she is a lawyer, and okay. you know how lawyers they be having S T Q in front of yeah. their name and stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna put S T Q in front of my name. Uh-huh. And <laughs> she was like, No, you can't do that. You're not a lawyer. I'm like, All right. So I was thinking, What can I put in front of my name? I'm like, I'm a doctor pastor. I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put a doctor, and I switched my my t- uh, Instagram and Twitter handle. I put doctor in front of it, and then the news took and ran with it, and they interviewed me. I was like, I'm a doctor password. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just takes off. It and anybody who watched you play for Penn State last year, you very well have right. an expertise in that particular yeah, field. So, yeah. so it was a nickname that fit me well. I just <laughs> well with it. I'm glad. I'm glad that Arthur put put in a jab there. That's. That's so typical Arthur Smith, yeah. if I've ever seen it. So every time you see me say, hey, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, when we were prepping for this interview, um, we were, of course, you know, Googling you, mm-hmm. as one does. We're hard-hitting journalists around here. <laughs> we Google. Um, but one of the first things that popped up was actually your huddle film playing basketball. Yeah. And you were going above yeah. the freaking rim. We were actually yeah. very like, oh, my God gosh like mm-hmm. ak can ball like w- please tell me one why you didn't get into basketball like w- into college you got well, because you, you <laughs> can yeah. play man basketball was my first i mean soccer was my first sport yeah. then basketball was my second sport and i was playing basketball in high school but football i mean when i got to high school i was playing basketball mm-hmm. and football mm-hmm. but football was more into like my main sport, the sport I was gonna play in college, and basketball was just for fun. So I was just out here, just having a good time, and I was the MVP of my team. <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, wait, the, the question yeah. that we have is: Have you played Drake in one on one yet? He he, I'm, th- for the record, <laughs> <laughs> on the record, everyone. Drake keeps ducking me. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have a basketball hoop in the locker room. Yeah, he said we, we he said we'll wait until the off season and we'll see. But for now, till he, till he faced me, he's <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of just want to see like a dunk contest. Yeah, too. me too. They don't even have to play. I'd like one. to be a like honorary judge because Drake can supposedly do five forties. I saw you get your entire chest yeah. above I'm, the rim. I'm calling Drake out. <laughs> I'm calling Drake out. Let's see what happens. That's Let's amazing. see what happens. Now, another person on this team that you have a great relationship with is Derek Tangelo. Yeah. We Scott and I have a great appreciation for Derek Tangelo. Mm-hmm. Please tell everybody who we know, you know, y'all were teammates at, at Penn State, but please tell me the origin story of how you guys met and became friends. Well, Tangelo, him and I from Maryland, and we was the same class in high school and all that. We actually played to get in the crowd bowl. And at the time, we didn't know each other that well. We were just playing on the same team. The crowd bowl was like the all-star game for high school from Maryland and Baltimore and all that. And I played against him when he was at Duke, and I was at Temple. Mm. We played – so – when we got to Penn State, they beat us that game. It was the bowl game. They beat us. When we got to Penn State, he was trolling me about that game and all that. <laughs> so since I already knew of him, and when we both – he actually went out. He committed to Penn State before I did. And when I was looking at the Penn State uh, Twitter profile, I seeing Tangela committed. Part of it was like, oh. I got to go see this guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Penn State was already there on my, on my right. top, top school. And he came out, I think, the day before I did. And I was just like, I'm just going to go ahead. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, I've talked to him, I think, uh, a couple of times. And he made the comment. He was like, yeah, AK kind of forced me to live with him. 
And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> I, like, I don't know if that's entirely true. Is it? Did you force him to live with you? He was going to live on campus. Uh-huh. And I would, I had to drop by the, the off campus spot at Penn State. It was like the best spot. So I hit him up. I said, Where you going to stay at? He said, uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to live on campus. I'm like, Now nah, come. Yeah. We have a house and with a couple of other teammates. Some of them was from Maryland as well. And I was like, You might as well come join us. And he came. The rest is history. We had the best spot on campus. We call it, we call it Trade File for Life. Wow. <laughs> I love that. There is a video from a press conference that you held during training camp or yeah. something like that. There's video, and the video has made it to TikTok, in case you didn't know. Huh? Of, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on TikTok. Yeah. Maria Martin from 11 oh, Alive. Yeah. 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 yeah, of you uh, singing a ballad yeah, called to Tombstone. Uh, called Tombstone. The and Tombstone it sounds drive. like... It, Derek tells a story, I guess, that like you like would come into his room and sing it to yeah, him. Yeah, that, that, that was my go-to song. Up. That was my go-to song at Penn State. You know, yeah. I, I used to sing all the time. And one time I was doing a podcast, and that was the first time I, 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 I sang the song in front of everybody, the tombstone, and bury me. <laughs> and and I, I was proud of myself. I say I got the vocals. A lot of people say I don't, but I believe I actually do have the vocals. I mean, you did it in front of a bank of cameras. Yeah, that was crazy. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, well, and too, was it true that y'all had a like semi recording studio mm, like in yeah. that house that y'all said? Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's called Trey Fire because everybody used to come to the house and make music. <laughs> I that, love that. That's why our house was so special because the whole team used to be in there making music. We was, you know how every team has like this one spot where everybody just hang out at. Yeah, that was our house. The only bad part we had to clean the house all the time because <laughs> people would come in and li- live their mess and all that. But other than that, you're saying like a bunch of twenty year old football players are like messy. Messy, man. Get out of uh-huh. town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Now. I, I love talking about all of this, but something about your story that I think people have heard, but maybe don't know like the full story is you were actually born in Cameroon yep. and lived there until you were 13 years old. For a lot of people who have never been to Cameroon, what was your childhood like? What are some stories from your childhood? Uh, my childhood was different. You know, Cameroon, back when I lived there, Technology was not really one of the biggest factors. So mm. to have fun, we didn't have TikTok and <laughs> I mean Facebook was hot at the time, but not that many people was on, on right. Facebook. Mm-hmm. So the way you have fun is hanging around the neighborhood with other kids, which was the best part of my childhood, and I had so much fun doing it. And fast forward, came to the U.S. and everything was kind of new to me. I mean, mm. I we speak English in Cameroon, but mm-hmm. like. Still had to get adjusted and all that. I feel like sport for me was the best part to make friends and bond with other people. And that's why I think my transition wasn't as hard because I played soccer growing up and sport was always a big part of my life. So start, I transitioned to basketball because I'm, I'm a competitor and mm-hmm. going to middle school and high school, you want to compete with other kids right. and you start playing basketball and football and that's how you make friends. Yeah, and 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 that and maybe that that made it easier because we we were gonna ask how hard was it as a thirteen year old. I yeah. think about how I was at thirteen. It's such kind of a, a pivotal time. It sounds like yeah. sports made it easier for you. You, you adapt, and over the time, next thing you know, you feel like you're just part of the culture, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that you're a professional football player now, so obviously that's <laughs> a sport and a career path that, right. that you've chosen. But d- does does soccer still? hold like a, a, a special place for it, you as, as the first sport that you it does it does i don't watch soccer as much as i used to mm-hmm. so i grew up in the ronaldo and messi era yeah and now they kind of old and <laughs> some new generation kind of have yeah. taken over which i don't follow soccer that much anymore so mm-hmm. that's kind of i'm still old school ronaldo messi type of guy love it i mean i so it's really interesting because i had before i'm 25 years old and before this year i'd never been out of the country of like the united states and i traveled to mexico and jamaica those were my like this past year Mm -hmm. first time out of the country and there really were like moments you know everybody talks about like culture shock being a thing and there really were moments where i was like oh my gosh like culture is so different everything's are so different when you first moved to the united states like what were some of those like culture shock moments for you? I mean, I felt like 
I felt like it was Christmas. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It was so you, fun. You can go to the grocery store and get, so in Cameroon, all the things are not so cheap, like mm-hmm. going to the grocery store and getting a uh, croissant, juice, and all mm-hmm. that. It's not as cheap. So so my dad was already living here when we moved here, and he had all the grocery and stuff, and we just thought it was Christmas. We just, Cause the first couple of days we just stay at home and we ate all the food. <laughs> <laughs> like the refrigerator is empty. It, it, so so the, the funny story was, so my dad had had no idea. So when we first got it, he was like, uh, so he went sh- uh, grocery shopping for the month and he was like, y'all can have whatever y'all want. So we thought that's how we was gonna be living. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just like a fun thing the first yeah, time. Yeah. So we, I think we ate everything like three days. And once I came back from work, he was surprised. He was like, hold on, now we need to talk about it's it. It's like, we need to have a sit down. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> this is not how it's going This happen. is not how it works out. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Now, speaking, speaking of your parents, now, how much did they know about football when you kind of were going through, even in high school, going mm-hmm. through, like, the recruiting process of being like, hey, yeah. mom and dad, like, I'm going to go play football in college, get my school paid for. What were, well, they, what were, what were they thinking? I think I st- my dad used to watch the games. Mm. He was a Seahawks fan. He he used to watch <laughs> the games just for fun. That's when he also transitioned to uh, watching football. My mom was clueless. All <laughs> uh, the only thing she knew, I used to come back from my football games. My body used to be hurting, and she used to give me massages. <laughs> that's, Aww. That's, Aww, that's, that's a good so one. Nice. That, that's all. That's all she knew. But my dad, I remember when my high school coach came up to me asked me if I wanted to play football and at the time I was just into basketball and at first I said no but I went home I told my dad as a joke I was like can you believe it that my, he came and asked me if I wanted to play football I mean I, it was just as a joke and my dad was he looked at me and was like well you might as well try yeah. <laughs> might as well do it what I, else I, you doing? <laughs> I was like where were you <laughs> and the, the next day I went and I and I joined the team and at first, I, had, I didn't know the rules, didn't know what the first down was. Yeah, right, all the basics. <laughs> I, I just, the only thing I knew, see ball, hit ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wherever the ball is, go yeah, after it. Yeah, wherever the ball is, just run through it. And over time, I actually started learning the game. And to, well, at first, my parents just thought I was doing it for fun. To, mm-hmm. I think my junior year, when I started getting my first offer, I believe was, my first offer was actually Navy. Really? Oh. Yeah, Navy offered me, and I was like, if that's the only offer I get, I guess I'm going to go to the military. <laughs> He's like, all right. <laughs> and first offer was Navy, and more offers started coming, and that's when my mom actually, she was like, she, had, she didn't believe me when I said I had offered to play in college. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm, I was like, I actually do. I mean, I'm going to get my school paid for it. Uh-huh. She didn't believe it was real to college. Uh, coaches actually start coming to our house right and yeah. that's when she was like oh it is for real it's the <laughs> real deal and i went to college and i mean after when i transferred when i left temple um i wasn't projected that high right but after the penn state season i mean everything just blew up mm-hmm. and everybody knew like oh he really about to go to the league uh-huh. and now you have like a full career as a football player i'm yeah, sure that for your mom is like oh my gosh yeah that's like his job <laughs> yeah it is never had a job before i remember in high school i used to apply to chipotle and all those fast food spots and they used to deny me and the reason <laughs> why because during the summer i had practices yeah uh-huh. and they don't want you to work only two days a week right and, I couldn't get no job, and I was just like, uh, <laughs> Well, it worked out for you. It did. It it's, did. It's my first job, and yeah. that, I'm, I'm blessed. How many people can say the first job is being an NFL player? Yeah. Not that, many people. There are worse days. So I remember when, when you were in high school, your original positions, you played wide receiver, yeah. right? Yeah. And linebacker? I was a wide receiver and linebacker. Right. So 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 it really is see ball, hit ball, and see ball, catch ball <laughs> yeah. at first. <laughs> Yeah. And but you're probably bigger and faster than everyone. Than everybody so like, run else, that so way. Nobody wanted to tackle me. So <laughs> I, was just, I was just running, catch the ball. I, I had some touchdown in high school. Yeah, and, and I may I don't know if this number is correct. You had more than twenty sacks. Yep, I had twenty 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 three twenty three sacks. As, that was my senior. Year. I was, yeah, I was, as a whoa. senior, right? <laughs> I was unblockable. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a badge of honor. I was rolling there. Yeah. I mean, but 
you have you, and then you probably have like a 180 pound left tackle, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Who's like, what is gonna happen here? Yeah, yeah. That my senior year was the one year where I actually everything clicked in terms of uh, knowing the rules of the right. game. Yeah. And I went to college thinking, oh, I know it all. And it was a whole different perspective. And I had to learn everything over. By the time I got to my dream year, mm-hmm. that's when everything came together. Right. And it's so, and I'm always curious of, about this with, with, with guys who go play at like major traditional powerhouse programs, right? Mm. You go from playing in high school in front of like, your parents and everybody else's parents. Yeah. And then you go and you play for Penn State and you play in front of like 80,000 yeah. screaming people with white towels. And <laughs> 105. 105, 105, right? Yeah. Tell wild. me what that's like when you have a sack and then 105,000 people stand up and scream it, their heads off. It don't get better than that. And one of my best, the white eye game is obviously one Craziest memory for me, but another memory that I have, I think, was playing Michigan in the close game, and it was towards the end of the game, and I had a sack to, I mean, at the time I thought I was closing the game, but uh-huh. we didn't score. It was a sack fumble, and we gave the ball back to the offense, and the stadium went crazy, and it was like, and I, I right there, I was having my moment. Was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like that. Was, that's one of my favorite moments being at Penn State. Yeah, I mean, you, you, like you like think of all these big moments, right? Like you think about hearing your name scroll across the bottom of the screen that you've been that drafted. Was, you you think Penn State? You've already had your your NFL career's not even that old, and you already have your first sack, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, those are, are those moments all kind of like draft night. I remember draft. I was so nervous draft night. <laughs> was, can't even explain. It's like. You know, at any moment now, your phone's going to be ringing. And especially when they show teams on TV mm-hmm. picking up the phone and some team will pick up the phone. You're looking at your phone. It's not ringing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're like, especially those teams that I told you, if you're, yeah. on the, if, you're uh, if you're still available by the time we're on the clock. Mm-hmm. So one of those teams, they're picking up the phone. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh, my phone about to ring right now, man. <laughs> and my phone doesn't ring. I'm like, damn, they lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it worked out for the best, and I end up. And when I picked up my phone, it said uh, Atlanta, but the John was on the clock, and I'm I'm confused. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah right. I don't, yeah. I don't know how the draft works. I'm like, hold on, the TV might be behind. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, are we watching the live feed? Like, yeah, what's I'm happening? Like, the TV behind yeah. the time. I care. I was. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to Georgia, <laughs> and I find out they traded and all. But after the draft, I was so happy of relief and. Life just got so much better. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that's what we were going to ask. It's like, how has your life changed from draft night to now, you know, a month and a half into the, your first NFL season? Well, a, a lot has changed because mm-hmm. now you're an NFL player. People look at you in a different light. And also, yeah, you have to move. You got to become a grown person. And I feel like spend way more much more money than i used to <laughs> <laughs> you ha- probably have a, a good amount you probably yeah, okay, I, yeah. it's just there's a lot more responsibility that mm-hmm. uh-huh. a couple months ago i didn't have which is like can't complain I mean, yeah this spot so um yeah it's cool for the most part i mean i it says say it's the best life I mean, yeah. yeah you get paid to do something that you love to do you wake up and play football all day so it's like was there and now some, uh, some some guys do this some guys don't but was there any big like any like big like purchase for me type of thing like after you signed the contract like did you get yourself like a car Are you going oh, a crazy yeah. vacation did you do anything so like the first, that so my parents still don't they still don't know how much my car was <laughs> <laughs> Mom and dad, don't watch. <laughs> so they, they still have. So I actually, the uh, yesterday was the first time I sent a picture of my car to my dad. Okay. Because he, he he called me and was like, uh, did you get a car or something uh-huh. like that? Uh, you don't keep us in the loop. And I, and I sent him a picture. He haven't asked me how much it was. <laughs> so if, if he does, I'm not telling the whole price. No. <laughs> no, no, no. He's going to give me the whole speech. Uh-huh. The whole speech. Uh, football career don't last for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's white, but I'm like, 
Uh, I went to the Mercedes dealership and I was like, I want that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that <was> beautiful. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they don't know how much. So <laughs> keep it and up. we're just we're just gonna go ahead and keep that between you right, know, it'll, yourself it'll and the Mercedes the dealership. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we've hit we've hit the part of the podcast. Everybody yes. has to do this. So rapid fire, five questions in mm. a row. Everybody gets asked the same questions. Yes. Yeah. Super hard hitting stuff. AK. Are you yeah. Ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Be- before we get there, I oh, gotta know. Yeah. Your nickname is also AK forty seven. Sometimes. Yeah. Are you number forty seven because of that? Well, so I'm sorry, nickname, I had to get this. No, in. I think that's a great question. My I love nick, it. Yeah. My nickname is AK, uh-huh. and people I always pull 47 behind. Okay, me. okay, but that's how it works. AK, because mm-hmm. my first name Arnold, middle sure. name Kevin. Mm-hmm. So yeah. AK, so when I was at Penn State in Temple, I was just changing the changing number to 47. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. So 47 is something that's just I would come with it. Okay. So okay. I got it. So it, yeah, the, the nickname is AK, and right? They, 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 like people kept saying, yeah. get number 47, dude. Yeah. It like goes together. Now that, that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. yeah. It's also cool that like everybody's like, hey, do this. It'll be really cool if you do it. Yeah. Like, and then all of a sudden. And then he's like walks out with 47. <laughs> it's like, I did it. Because my number was 17 in right. college. Yeah. And the, the media people that used to come to me change the 40. So I'm like, nah, I'm rocking with 17. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So oh, I'm sorry yeah. that I interrupted the, no, no, the no. rapid fire question. I just had a note there and I. It's all good. I I think that was very important information of of which we needed. Now, to the rapid fire. Yes. Question number one. What is your favorite play of your career? NFL or? Any time. You could pick pick NFL. You could pick college, whatever. Well, I called against Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Against Michigan. Definitely is. That 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 must be. Now I have to go back and watch that. I know. I almost too. like want to pull it up on YouTube and be yeah, like, and "That place went ballistic." <laughs> right. Do you uh, ever just sometimes like go back and watch it, like just yeah. to just to feel something? Just to like well, relive. I did prior to the drive, but now I mm-hmm. don't do it as much. But later on, when I'm old, oh yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, oh yeah, it's gonna be a repeat. Uh-huh. <laughs> just cue it up, just on a loop on your TV. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if if you were to go to like a, a karaoke bar, I don't know. Maybe you do sing karaoke. What is your go-to song? Or if you don't, or like what would be your go-to song to go sing in mm-hmm. front of a big crowd of people? Well, when it comes to singing, Wild Wave is kind of my go-to person. Yeah. I have a few of his songs that I kind of know the lyrics, so. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely pick a Wild Wave song. It might be Tombstone. I did it a lot. So maybe, yeah, I, I, maybe that I, one. I, I come up. I come up with a different one. He, he has a lot of those uh, emotional songs. Yeah, I right. Can pick one yeah. of those and just do it. I feel like Tombstone is probably just like playing in a loop in Derek Tangelo's head. How much <laughs> he probably sang it. You know, you know, no fun, fun fact. So, so I be playing with Tangelo, uh. and I call him my rookie. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mess with him all day, and I just be like, "Hey, hey, well, give me some to drink." <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be, it'd be, he'd be funny because if he tells you the story, you're going to be like, uh, AKI was messing with me. I can have a bad day. He's going to come to me and be like, hey, Rook. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, man. Okay. Um, your favorite authentic Cameroonian food? Uh, I say it's not really a traditional one. Mm-hmm. I would say the way my mom makes. Uh, chicken and plantain. Mm. Mm. Oh, so I love that. It. That was my go-to going up. Ooh, yeah. I love plantains. Okay, if I you could just too. get her to like send a big batch down yeah. for all of us, I I'm, think that I'm would be. I'm trying fun. to get some of myself. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm <laughs> you're like, some for I me. take care of me before I take care of a hundred other people. Yeah, okay? I'm still waiting on mine. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get that care package. Yeah. Um, okay. Normally, I feel like we probably know the, the, yeah, the, the next the, answer. The Falcons player that, that you hang out with the most is probably Tangelo, but if it's who would be the next guy? So, Tangelo and D'Angelo. Tangelo and yeah. D'Angelo. I yeah. love it. Tangelo and D'Angelo. It's like a, a buddy cop situation. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and the last question we got for you um, What is your biggest pet peeve? Like, what like drives you nuts that people do? Ooh. So, I'm. 
I'm not the type of person that stay around people for like a long period of time. Okay. Especially if, if someone come to my house and sit for a couple of days, uh-huh. I'll start looking at the clock. Like, <laughs> Be like, hey, uh, when's your flight, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Anytime now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can go on. <laughs> so over, people who overstay, they're welcome. That's a good one. Yeah, that is. Eventually, yeah. it's just like it house yeah I, as someone i i'm pretty like introverted like i feel like i'm an an, an, an introvert with like extroverted tendencies so yeah. when people are like around me all the time I'm like all right like i'm gonna like, need I, a recharge i like that my spirit when i want to hang out with people i meet you at your space <laughs> <laughs> it's like don't come into mine yeah don't I'm, come into mine because when i'm tired i can always go back to my space yeah exactly uh one last one uh whether it's a movie that you saw recently or a show that you're binging at home anything uh what's on your screen right now like what are you watching uh right now power power Ooh. yeah power is there are one. lots of power like spin-off shows too yeah. so, like, you got a lot to and watch I, and i'm watching every one of them are you really you right. and the movie the movie i'm excited about Black Panther 2 coming. Yes. yes. Wakanda, Wakanda forever. Yeah. forever. I Cannot can't wait. Wait. <laughs> that trailer looks so awesome. A friend of mine, uh, her job, so they have a, like, a, a, a watch screen on Thursday before it come out. Told her, don't call me. Don't speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to me. I'm watching it that Friday before anybody can spoil it. <laughs> All right. I, I, uh, so I may go to the midnight premiere on Thursday night before Friday. So I'll make sure on that Friday, like, I won't see you. Like, I'll yeah, just, no. like, make sure in the locker room. I'll be like, all right, bye, AK. Like, I'm not talking I, to you. Some people will try. I hate when a new movie oh. come out and you go on social media and it's people talk about that movie ain't that good. No, you, I don't You don't want to watch it no it. more. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, I got the... um the most recent Star Wars movie got um, spoiled for me Uncool, as yeah. as I was walking into the theater, too. That's another pet peeve. And I was like, how dare <laughs> you? How dare you? I was, like, upset about it, too. So I feel like the moral of this podcast is that on the first day that w- that Wakanda Forever comes out, we just do a big group outing. We rent out an entire movie theater. Honestly. Pack I'm sure it. a lot of people would want to see it. I'm Heck all yeah, for man. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching it. If not the first day come out, it's the second. Yeah. Okay, uh, Terry Fontenot and David Bassey, please make that happen <laughs> for yeah. us. Let's call it out. And uh, that's going to wrap it for another freaking awesome episode <laughs> yeah. of Falcons at Focus. Please rate, review, subscribe. Give us all five stars. That's Tori. I'm Scott. This is AK. And this is the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you very much, man. And we will talk to you again next week.